This is the first of three lectures on where does the electron go. And as always, I'd like to start with the basics. And to start with the basics, we need to build up what you know as the Bohr atom with the nucleus, followed by shells or orbits or energy levels that are concentric around the nucleus. And this is the classic Bohr atom. And in physical science, you learned that in the Bohr atom, you could put two electrons into the first energy level, eight into the second energy level, 18 into the third energy level, and you may have learned you could put 32 into the fourth. It turns out you can put 50 in the fifth and 72 in the sixth. And that's true, but it's actually not the whole answer. So it's true, but incomplete. In order to be more precise, we need to deal with a quantum model. The quantum model is a mathematical model. It uses probabilities. It has some really strange ideas, but we're not going to get into those here. We're just going to use this as a way to modify the Bohr atom. So we're going to take this and modify it a little bit. And the first thing to remember is that each of the white circles are called the primary energy level and is given the initial N. And it turns out that the primary energy level N can be broken down into smaller units called orbitals. And the number of orbitals in an energy level is equal to energy level N. So for example, the first energy level can have one orbital. The second energy level can have two orbitals the third three, the fourth four, so on and so forth. But it turns out that orbitals can be broken down into suborbitals. We're going to come back to that in just a second. There are four types of orbitals, and later you'll see what I mean by types of orbitals. There is the S, the P, the D, and the F. And the first question I'm usually asked is what do S, P, D, and F stand for? And S stands for sharp, P stands for principal, D stands for diffuse, F stands for fundamental, and this has to deal with the spectrum of an atom, which we're not going to get into now, but we may later. Orbitals are made up of suborbitals. The S orbital has one suborbital. P has three suborbitals. The D has five suborbitals. And the F has seven suborbitals. And any suborbital can hold up to two electrons at a time, but no more than two at any time. But they can hold less than two. A suborbital can be empty or hold one or two electrons. So the S orbital, which has one suborbital, can hold two electrons. The P orbital, with three suborbitals, can hold six electrons. The D can hold 10 electrons, and the F can hold 14 electrons. Now, as I mentioned earlier, orbitals are based upon math, and they do have, you can graph them, and you can have a shape. The S, with one suborbital, is spherical around the X, Y, and Z axis. P looks dumbbell-shaped, and the dumbbells are centered on the x, y, and z axis. Then the d and the f become a little more complicated. D has five suborbitals, and if you graph all five solutions, they look like this. These are areas where you can find the electrons. And the f suborbitals look like this. Once again, you, what you are graphing out is the probability of finding an electron within that area. So when you put these all together, you end up with a shape that's different than the one you have always imagined. For example, for argon, under the Bohr model, it looks a solar system, when in actuality, it actually looks more like this collection of balloons, with each of the balloons being the probability of finding an electron. So to review the basics, we will be using a modified Bohr atom, and we need to deal with orbits, which are the primary energy level, and those are the little gray lines around the nucleus here. Orbits can be subdivided into orbitals. The number of orbitals in an energy level is the same as the n. So n equals 1 as 1 orbital, n equals 2 as 2 orbitals, so on and so forth. There are four types of orbitals, s, t, d, and f. Each orbital can be broken down into suborbitals. s has one suborbital, p has three suborbitals, d has five, f has seven, each suborbital can hold none, one, or two electrons. Or in other words, each suborbital can hold two electrons max. So the S with one suborbital can hold two electrons. P can hold six. D can hold 10. F can hold 14. Might be a good idea to put this on your note card. So those are the basics. In the next lecture, we're going to begin to apply some of this knowledge to begin to figure out where the electron goes and the very specific conditions. Thank you.